Hello and welcome to Anesthesia Tools. I am Dr. Sanish. I am taking you through the latest American Heart Association 2020 updates on CPR and emergency cardiovascular care. Understanding the science and evidence behind the updates is very important. Do you agree if I say that one CPR can save many lives? Is that possible? I'm planning to take you through the updates in several small modules. Let's start our navigation with basic life support guidelines. As with all AHA guidelines, each 2020 recommendation is assigned a class of recommendation based on the strength and consistency of evidence, alternative treatment options, and the impact on patients and society. The level of evidence is based on the quality, quantity, relevance, and consistency of the available evidence. Prompt delivery of bystander CPR doubles the victim's chances of survival from cardiac arrest. Therefore, the latest guidelines say that it is reasonable to increase bystander willingness to perform CPR through CPR training, mass CPR training, CPR awareness initiatives, and promotion of hands-only CPR. A recent systematic review from the International Laysan Committee on Resuscitation, ILCO, found that notification of lay rescuers via a smartphone app or text message alert is associated with shorter bystander response times, higher bystander CPR rates, shorter time to defibrillation, and higher rates of survival to hospital discharge for individuals who experience out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. AHA states that most communities experience low rates of bystander CPR and AED use. Let's start from adult change of survival. Here's what 2015 guidelines had. Remember, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Importance of each link is emphasized in existing guidelines. The adult out of hospital and in hospital cardiac arrest chains of survival have been updated to better highlight the evolution of systems of care and critical role of recovery and survivorship with the addition of a new link. A sixth link, recovery, was added to the in hospital and out of hospital chains of survival. This recovery link acknowledges the need for system of care to support recovery, discuss expectations, and provide plans that address treatment, surveillance, and rehabilitation for cardiac arrest survivors and their caregivers as they transition care from the hospital to home and return to role and social function. Let us see the AHA basic life support guidelines. This is the 2015 guidelines. We can find that essentially there are no major changes in the BLS algorithm, even in 2020 CPR and ECC guidelines. One may say the new update has mentioned rescue breathing as one breath every six seconds rather than every five to six seconds in 2015 guidelines. However, many statements are clarified further in the 2020 update. Lay rescue CPR improves survival from cardiac arrest by two to three fold. The benefit of providing CPR to a patient in cardiac arrest outweighs any potential risk of providing chest compression to someone who is unconscious but not in cardiac arrest. 
it has been shown that the risk of injury from CPR is low in these patients. Ideally, the activation of the emergency response system and initiation of CPR occur simultaneously. In the current era of widespread mobile device usage and accessibility, a lone responder can activate the emergency response system simultaneously with starting CPR by dialing for help, placing the phone on speaker mode to continue communication and immediately commencing CPR. The sequence of CAB, that is circulation airway breathing has been re-supported by the new literature in 2020 guidelines as well. There is no evidence that cricoid pressure facilitates ventilation or reduces the risk of aspiration in cardiac arrest patients. Overall principle of uh, minimizing interruptions in CPR and maintaining a chest compression fraction of at least 60% is emphasized. The 2020 guidelines include an opioid associated resuscitation emergency algorithm for trained rescuers as well as for uh, lay rescuers. Multiple studies have found that targeted resuscitation training for opioid users and their families and friends is associated with higher rates of naloxone administration in witnessed overdoses. It is reasonable for lay rescuers to receive training in responding to opioid overdose, including provision of naloxone. Respiratory arrest is more prominently addressed in the beginning with, is the patient breathing normally as the initial decision? If yes, the algorithm provides clear steps to prevent deterioration. For adults and adolescents, responders should perform chest compressions and rescue breaths if they are trained and perform hands-only CPR if not trained to perform rescue breaths. However, for infants and children, CPR should include compressions with rescue breaths. Naloxone is not as emphasized as before in 2015 algorithm. It was a standalone box with doses. In 2020, it is under prevent deterioration and start CPR as consider naloxone with the no doses. For respiratory arrest steps, the algorithm states give naloxone rather than consider naloxone. AHA 2020 evidence update has included cardiac arrest in pregnancy. Do not delay providing chest compressions for a pregnant woman in cardiac arrest. High quality CPR can increase the mother's and the infant's chance of survival. If you do not perform CPR on a pregnant woman when needed, the lives of both the mother and infant are at risk. Perform high quality chest compressions for a pregnant woman in cardiac arrest as you would do for any victim of cardiac arrest. Use an AED for a pregnant woman in cardiac arrest as you would for any victim of cardiac arrest. In cases of pre-hospital maternal arrest, Rapid transport directly to a facility capable of perimortem cesarean delivery and neonatal resuscitation with early activation of the receiving facilities, adult resuscitation, obstetric and neonatal resuscitation teams provides the best chance for a successful outcome. If the woman begins to move, speak, blink or otherwise react, stop CPR and roll her onto her left side. A new pediatric chain of survival was created for in-hospital cardiac arrest in infants, children, and adolescents. A sixth link recovery was added to all four chains of survival. Regarding infant compressions, a single rescuer may now use two thumbs or heel of one hand for infant compressions. AHA 2020 update says for infants, 
Single rescuers, whether lay rescuers or healthcare providers, should compress the sternum with two fingers or two thumbs placed just below the nipple line or mammary line. For infants, if the rescuer is unable to achieve the guideline recommended depth, that is at least one third the diameter of the chest, it may be reasonable to use the heel of one hand. Systematic reviews suggest that the two thumb encircling hands technique may improve CPR quality when compared with two finger compressions, particularly for depth. However, there are limited data comparing various hand positions. Coming to pediatric assisted ventilation rate. The updated guidelines say that for infants and children with a pulse but absent or inadequate respiratory effort, it is reasonable to give one breath every two to three seconds, that is 20 to 30 breaths per minute. Ventilation rate during CPR with an advanced airway, it may be reasonable to target a respiratory rate range of one breath every two to three seconds. Again, that is 20 to 30 breaths per minute, accounting for age and clinical condition. Rates exceeding these recommendations may compromise hemodynamics. AHA 2020 guidelines reaffirm that it may be reasonable to use audio-visual feedback devices during CPR for real-time optimization of CPR performance. A recent randomized controlled trial reported a 25% increase in survival to hospital discharge from in-hospital cardiac arrest with audio feedback device on compression depth and recoil. A recent systematic review found that EMS provider exposure to cardiac arrest cases is associated with improved patient outcomes, including rates of return of spontaneous circulation and survival. Because exposure can be variable, the AHA recommends that EMS systems monitor provider exposure and develop strategies to address low exposure. Debriefings for rescuers is stated in 2020 guidelines, rescuers and hospital-based care providers may experience anxiety or post-traumatic stress about providing or not providing basic life support. Team debriefings may allow a review of team performance as well as recognition of the natural stresses associated with caring for a patient near death. Stroke recognition. Stroke outcomes improve with the prompt recognition of stroke signs and early access to time-sensitive interventions. Several stroke recognition tools identify stroke based on the following signs, face drooping, arm weakness, and speech difficulty or slurring speech. The FAST acronym can be helpful in recognizing a stroke. Observational studies of stroke recognition tools found reduction in the time from symptom onset to treatment among patients with stroke, improved stroke diagnosis rates, and improved time to definitive treatment, especially thrombolysis. How about aspirin for adults with non-traumatic chest pain? Aspirin, when given early to a patient having a heart attack, can improve survival. The updated guidelines encourage alert adults experiencing non-traumatic chest pain to chew and swallow aspirin unless the victim has a non-aspirin allergy or has been advised by a healthcare provider not to take aspirin. It was the opinion of the first aid writing group that the potential benefits of early administration of aspirin outweighs the potential risk of a single dose of aspirin. I'm winding up this video. Coming up in subsequent episodes, whole lots of updates uh, to be discussed. We shall employ a spaced learning approach as advised by American Heart Association 2020 updates. Your comments and suggestions are always welcome. Until we meet next time with more interesting updates 
and science behind updates from AHA 2020 CPR and emergency cardiovascular care updates. It's me, Dr. Sanich, signing off. Goodbye.